Welcome back to the channel, Tronich here. Coming back to talk to you about a company that is absolutely phenomenal, great customer service, and great product. And I'm here to talk to you about them. So first, we're gonna try my little mini intro that I have for this episode. Check it out. Wasn't that great? Please, I'm sorry. But with that being said, clearly we're talking about Newbie Drone. Newbie Drone is the company that we're going to be talking about today. Now, first and foremost, the sticker. I got to say, I got the sticker from one of my orders, and it's an amazing sticker, and it would be great to put on like a case of some sort. But I would love if they would uh, come out with some smaller stickers, because I would love to put it on my Omway Commanders, my goggles, so that I could rock it all the time while flying, because this is a little big. I don't really have anything this big to stick it on, but if I had some smaller ones, I could put them on my goggles and rock it out. So, newbie drone, if you're listening, some smaller stickers too would be awesome. That being said, some other things that I have of theirs that I would like to talk about. We got the uh, the lanyard that I'm wearing right now. This is one of the most comfortable lanyards I've ever worn. The quality of this is amazing. And I mean, the thought that had to have gone into this, because I mean, this is, first of all, the material is just soft. It's comfortable on the neck. The adjusters, all right, let's talk about the adjusters. First, they're down here. So when you adjust it to make it smaller, they're not rubbing on your neck. They're down here out of the way. And there's two of them. A lot of uh, lanyards only have one. So if you need to make it really small, this buckle ends up being by your neck. By having two buckles, you can still make that same adjustment and the buckles don't travel all the way up by your neck. That alone, that's huge for comfort level. That's huge because you don't want this plastic rubbing on you and they thought that through. And then you have the buckle here so that you can disconnect. So you can be wearing this and you want to put your transmitter down. You just unclip, simple as that. And when you're ready to go back on, you just reclip. Boom, you're ready to go and you can fly again. You don't have to keep taking this off because a lot of us have our goggles on our forehead with the antenna sticking out. You're not gonna sit here and try to delicately take this off of your head as you're doing, it's a lot easier to unclip. This product alone, and it's only a couple of bucks. Go buy one already. This, this thing is so cheap, and so it's like the best couple of dollars that I spent, I have to say. Some other products that I've been using, as you know, in my troop build, I had the uh, OSD Stinger camera that I uh, took apart, and that was the centerpiece of my troop build. And then we also have the Nitro Nectar batteries that are made by them. These are phenomenal. The ones I'm running right now are the 4.35 volt high voltage 250 mAh packs. I get at least three to four minutes of flight time. The punch outs got some oomph to them. Being 4.35 volts, they just seem to last a little longer. And compared to the other batteries I've been using, there's nothing nothing better than these. Uh, they don't get puffy. They 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 just they can handle what you what you the demands that you put on them when you're using them. So they are a little bit more pricey. I will tell you, you can go and buy cheaper battery packs, but be warned, you get what you pay for. I, I I've been using some crazy pony ones. And I thought, oh, I'll save some bucks. Use these cheaper ones. But the performance is just not there. These have such so much more performance per dollar. That's why I went and just got myself a whole fistful of these. And by a fistful I mean twelve. So apparently I can hold 12 in a fist. But I did that because when you're flying, the last thing you wanna be worrying about is having to change your battery packs constantly because they're not performing. I recommend go and buy yourself some of these also if you're flying any kind of a Tiny Whoop style of quad, this is your battery pack you want. This is gonna be my go-to from now on. That being said, those are the products that I have used. And I also, in the previous video, I teased about having the uh, cockroach frame with the Newbie Drone Gold Motors and some props on there saying like, you know, what was I gonna put into the middle of it? Well, there's actually a story with that. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of story time. Newbie Drone came out with their version two of their B-Brain flight controller. Everything about it was amazing in my opinion. So I ran out and bought one. And I was probably one of the first, you know, batch if you will. Because when I received it, initially it started with issues. Now you're probably wondering yourself, well, why are you so happy with this company if the product you bought had issues? Because like I said, they have the best customer service. 
and you need to know that when you buy products, you need to go with a company that you can trust because if you have a problem, you need to know that you can go back and get that problem resolved. And that's what happened in my case. The problem I was having was when I would fly, I'm running Spectrum, which is DSMX protocol. As I would fly, 10 seconds into the flight, I would end up with a fail safe. At first I thought, oh, well it must be just I'm flying out of range or I'm doing something wrong or I'm not bound correctly. You know, what do I know? I went back, looked on YouTube and saw that there were other people having some similar issues. People were having issues with the camera. It was having like this ghosting image that was a, that would appear like a haze almost and it actually kind of made the face of a ghost. And it was kind of ironic because of the Halloween time and everything, it was, you know. It was entertaining, but it was weird at the same time. In any case, so I was having a lot of issues and it was pretty much unflyable. A couple emails back and forth with their customer service and they said, send it in and we'll take care of it. Sent in my stack, they took care of it. They worked their magic and then they sent it back to me saying that they fixed the issues. And I have to report, they are fixed. The thing flies like a dream now. That would be cool because now I have what I'm expected to have in the first place. But on top of that, they went the extra mile and I, I guess, you know, just to show their appreciation to those who were part of the first early adopters, they were gonna send us out some goodies as part of being that. And that to me says, they didn't have to do that. But the fact that they took their time to do that and they, they spent money to send us goodies, that says a lot to me for a company. What I have here, before we get into, cause I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about this, don't you worry. This is coming up. We're gonna talk about what's in here, why, why I love this thing so much. We'll also talk why there's one pink prop because I've been flying the bejesus out of this thing. So here I have the box that uh, I received from Newbie Drone that contains, I guess you would call our appreciation care package for being an early adopter. And I think uh, a company that takes the time to do that is definitely one that you should buy from because you know they don't get it right and there's a problem, they will make it right. So I'm gonna do a little unboxing and see what they sent me. I got my little X-Acto knife. And across the top. All right. Let's see what we got here. All right, we got some paper. Oh, wow. All right, this is really cool. I can guarantee you this is gonna be getting, look, I got chill. I got goosebumps. Can you see this? I actually got goosebumps from it. I don't know if you can see it, but my hair's on end. I got goosebumps. How crazy is that? All right, so I can tell you this hat is gonna be getting some definite usage. Except my head, it's a little bit bigger than that. So I'm gonna tell you, this hat is definitely gonna get some usage. It's gonna be, I'm gonna be rocking this hat hard because I wanna show my appreciation to them for sending me the hat. So, newbie drone, thank you so much. Love the products, thank you for the hat. There's the logo, well there's the logo, there's the name. Go to the website, check it out, go buy some stuff from them. So I'm gonna rock this on, put this on for now. And while I'm wearing it, now we're gonna talk about this. This is essentially, I built this from scratch, but every single part I got from the Newbie Drone website. So everything on here is from Newbie Drone and I'm gonna go over what's on it. Props came from Newbie Drone, they're the King Kong props that are for you know all their Tiny Whoop style. The only thing I didn't get from Newbie Drone is the carbon fiber cross. And I'm sure if they had, I would probably have bought it from them too. But since they didn't, I had to buy one. I think I bought this one on Amazon. It came in like a three pack. Much cheaper than the one that I bought for my troop. As you can see the difference, this one's a little bit thinner. And it looks like there'd be a lot of stress right at the centralized point. This one's a little bit thicker and looks like it would be a little bit stronger. That's the only thing that didn't come from Newbie Drone, but the rest of this all came from Newbie Drone. So we have the props came from Newbie Drone. The frame is a cockroach frame that came from Newbie Drone. The motors are the gold edition. They are out of this world. I cannot believe the amount of power that these motors put out is ridiculous. Like I didn't think it was even possible that these little quads could do what this can do. And then the star of the show is just the whole stack in the middle here, which is you got your flight controller, 
you have your OSD, and then you have your camera. Now, speaking of the camera, the first thing you'll notice is there's a little piece of black electrical tape on the back of it, and that's the fix to basically take care of that ghosting that I was mentioning earlier. What was happening is they were getting light leak onto the sensor from the back, so that was what was causing the hazing. So that was a really simple fix. It just put a little piece of tape. Now what I love about this quad is the fact that they added a full-fledged OSD. Full pitch, center throttle, left yaw, goes into the menu system. And then from there you can make all kinds of changes. And when you hook it up into Betaflight, you can adjust what elements are on your screen for your OSD, where they are on the screen. You can have like the artificial horizon. You can have the center target. You can have the uh, altitude bars on the sides. There's all kinds of stuff that you can turn on and off with this. And that alone is crazy that you can do that on a little tiny quad like this. Like normally I only see that on like videos for bigger quads because you wouldn't think there's enough space or weight to have for a full-fledged Betaflight OSD, but it does. Somehow they got it all in here. The fact that you can go into this and make adjustments to what frequency you're transmitting on. All these other cameras have a button that you have to push and cycle through and they either will have a digital LED to tell you what channel you're on or different lights to signify what channel you're on, but you're really never quite sure what channel you're on. Here, you, in, in the OSD, you just pick the channel you wanna be on and boom, now you're, that's the channel you're transmitting on. You can adjust so much and not even, I'm amazed that no one else does it and the fact that no one else does it and they were able to do it, this is why you gotta go and run and get one of these. All right, so now I'm gonna tell you about what I did to it. Cause you know, I'm Mr. Mod. I gotta, ch I gotta tweak, mod, and do things to everything. What did I do to this? Nothing. Nothing. When there's a product that you can't even find something to modify and you're just running it stock because it's that good, again, that says something about the product. There was nothing that I needed to do with this other than assemble it. And even that was the most easiest build. Like I'm telling you right now, let me, let me talk to you as a beginner to a beginner. Or even if you're an expert, hey, you're used to maybe having a complicated build. This now becomes very easy. My other build involved a lot of soldering. I mean, obviously, granted, I had to break the whole camera apart. So therefore, it required soldering to do that. But even if I didn't, to put this together would still have required me to solder the camera onto the flight controller. So worst case, I still would have to solder at least two things, two wires, a positive and a negative power for the camera. So unless I, if I don't own a soldering iron, then that means in order to build my own quad, I'd have to go buy a soldering iron, buy solder, learn how to solder. Well, I'm here to tell you that this is, that gone are those days. Because this camera, plugs into the OSD with this wire right here. So where that attaches, hold that up, that's where the camera is attaching to the OSD. The OSD is that other board. If I turn it this way, you might be able to see it better. So that second board there, it's a kind of sandwiched in there, that's the OSD. It plugs on to the flight controller on some pins. So they're attached. And then the motors just plug into the normal ports. So I had nothing to solder to build this. As a new person, you don't have to have soldering skill, but you can still build your own and understand the components that go into it. Quite frankly, it's a good experience to build your own versus just buying it pre-built because now I know if something goes wrong, how to fix it, where to go, what to do, because now I know how these parts all go together. And the fact that I didn't have to solder, for me it's not a big deal because I, I can solder. But if I didn't know how to solder, it, it would be beyond me to put one of these together, but now I can. Uh, l let's, let's get a little personal here. Let's get up close and personal. If you're gonna buy 
a little micro quad. I'm telling you, go to the newbie drone website and pick yourself up the parts because it blows my mind. I'm going to throw a little bit of footage in here of me just flying around a little bit. Granted, I'm not that great yet. Hey, this is Tronage from the future, and I'm just editing the footage here, and I'm going to leave a pause for a moment and give you a little bit of an explanation. This was on Thanksgiving, and we were over one of my family members' uh, apartments, and we were down in the basement and flying around in the storage area. And as I was watching this footage before I went to edit it, I couldn't believe how some areas looked like it was unflyable. Did a little bit of research and it turns out that while DVRs are recording to you while you're flying live, it may look like a little glitch that you don't even notice and doesn't affect your flight. But the DVR gets very confused by that glitch of how to record it and it'll cause it to skip frames, screen tearing, synchronization issues, all kinds of stuff will happen until it recovers from it. As you're watching this, realize that there's some parts that you be like, how is he even flying? And the reason is because it didn't look like that while I was flying. It looked perfectly fine. And at the end, I do crash, but it's not because I couldn't see. It's just because of my poor piloting skills. The other thing is that I have the OSD up, and you'll notice that it has right now, it says on time, 1 minute and 52 seconds. And the reason is because I put a battery in, and then I just let it sit there while I was helping one of my cousins over there get all set up. So it actually ran my battery down. So this is a pretty short flight, but it should give you a little bit of a representation of what you can expect while flying this thing. I really don't give it full throttle or full forward tilt. I, in the very beginning, you'll see me kind of push it, and then I'm just kind of cruising. Even though this may look fast, this is not even close to what how fast this can go. All right, so let's give the footage a start, and I'll talk you through it. So my cousin gets out of the way, I take off, there you can see the center mark, and right there I'm like kind of moving a little bit, and then I get a little scared and I kind of back off the throttle. Still moving really fast, but nowhere near what this is capable of. There's also a little piece of dust on my lens I just noticed. Made it through that ladder no problem, see all that? I was able to see no problem, so I don't know what was going on in this DVR, and here again, the crash I mentioned and I ended up underneath the treadmill but it wasn't because I couldn't see it just was not good flying hey hope you enjoyed that video if you did perhaps you'd like to subscribe check out the latest videos I'm always posting new content if you'd like you'd also become a supporter on my patreon page and while you're at it here's some other videos that you might like this one over here is the latest one I posted and this one I think might interest you check them out See ya.